Are you designing a user onboarding flow and need all the hot tips? Did you create an onboarding process that made zero impact? Are you just interested in user onboarding? Well, in any case, I got you. This is Sarah from User Guiding and today I am letting you in on our best of the best, top five best practices that we practice in user guiding. Let's get started. One, simplicity is key. The very first thing you need to do before starting to design a user onboarding process is to get in a minimalist mindset. Not as a general why, but as a rule of thumb. You can have the most maximalist UX, you can be the Lady Gaga of SaaS products out there, but if you don't keep it simple, short and concise for your users, they just might get lost. A good example is Trello's Future Tour. It's four steps, the copy is short, and the design is simple. Kudos to Trello. Two, let's get personal. In 2023, you cannot compromise on personalization. You are all conditioned to get great personalized experiences from Netflix, Amazon, and other platforms we use every single day. Any less won't cut it, and your product needs to keep up, especially during onboarding. Good news is, depending on your product, creating a personalized experience might be easier than you might think. For example, personalization can be as simple as Canva does it, or it can be as well thought as Grammarly's email insights. You know your audience, you set the boundaries. Just get personal. Three, let there be fun with gamification. Now, whoever said user onboarding is a hassle obviously hasn't tried their hand at gamification. Gamification is a best practice that can take many shapes and sizes, but the most prominent forms are checklists, awards and badges, as well as leader scores. Now, not all SaaS products are compatible with all that, but even a bit of interactivity can do the trick. Still, your best friend at gamification is a good old user onboarding checklist. Here's how Keyhole did it and scored a good 550% increase in the number of trial to paid user conversions thanks to it. Four, get that feedback. So then how do we know that we are doing a good job with our user onboarding flows? You can create tens of checklists and add your users' first names to a product tour, but how do we know it works? By asking your users, of course. Collecting feedback is an underrated best practice when creating onboarding processes, but without good data from your users, you're practically blind. And how do you collect feedback in the best way possible? By using in-app surveys. Hear me out. Traditional methods of surveys are highly inefficient when all that we do actually takes place inside the app. So you need an in-app survey, like how HubSpot does it or how SurveyKiwi does it. I say you check out our new in-app survey feature, link in the description. Five, know the pecan rule. And finally, know your theory on onboarding. The pecan rule is a cognitive bias that none of us are immune from. It basically means that users will remember the climax and the end of an experience. So while onboarding, this becomes an even more important phenomenon as it may dictate whether your users are gonna be fans or churners. A good example of the pecan rule in practice can be a good interactive onboarding for the peak and a celebratory message at the end. Landbot is a great example of this since the peak of the onboarding has lots of interactivity and the and has confettis for celebration. I went through that onboarding last year and it was the first example that popped up in my head. That's what the pecan rule does for your onboarding. And believe me, it is the best, best practice you'll ever practice. So to wrap it up, keep five key points in mind when creating your very own onboarding process. Simplicity is key, personalization makes a difference, gamification keeps users engaged, and you are blind without feedback and users will always remember an onboarding if you know how to peek it and end it. Oh, and if you want to do all that no code in a matter of minutes, tools like user guiding is your best friend. But if you don't need a tool, we still have cool onboarding UX tips and tricks, so don't forget to subscribe. This was Sarah from user guiding and see you next time.